I just love you, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Sean, you're amazing. Thank you so much. We have a beautiful music ministry, don't we? Thank you. So one of my favorite television shows still, especially before I go to bed, I watch this show because it just makes me laugh, and that's how I want to drift off to sleep. Uh, I love to watch the old Seinfeld episodes. <laughs> And we all have our favorites, don't we? Greg was talking about the soup Nazi the other day. I love the episode called Serenity Now, <laughs> which I just saw a few weeks ago. Serenity Now were two words that Frank Costanza discovered on a self-help tape meant to be used as a calming affirmation. But instead, Frank shouts them at the top of his lungs throughout the show as he's angered and frustrated by his wife. Serenity now! <laughs> and throughout the episode, George and Kramer and others are using those words and shouting those words, serenity now, to attempt to solve their problems and bring them peace. But instead, they get a lot more problems. Good idea, these powerful words, serenity now. Definitely could have used a softer delivery and positively could have used some spiritual consciousness, right? But it's so good to laugh. <laughs> and we need to lighten up, don't we? The show, though, got me thinking about serenity and how much that word means to me today and what a precious gift serenity, the peace of mind is. Peace is probably the most needed and prayed for quality in all of our lives. What do you think? We all want peace. Inner peace, outer peace, we want peace. Once a week, I facilitate a spiritual group for recovering addicts. It is a time that blesses me over and over again. And as an icebreaker, um, I often throw around a bag of questions to encourage honesty and to help all of us to get to know each other. I also do it to help us all see that no matter what our background, no matter what we've been through, no matter who we are, we're so much the same. We're so alike. So one of the questions I ask is, if you could awaken one aspect of your personality that you had as a child and feel you have since lost, what would it be? It's a good one, isn't it? Number one answer, feeling carefree. If you were to name the emotion you waste the most time on, what would it be? Number one answer, worry. Number two, fear. If you could have an angel whisper one thing in your ear every day, what would you want to hear? Everything is going to be okay. We're all alike, aren't we? But how many of us are waiting for someone to change, something to happen, or something to stop happening, conditions to shift, surroundings to be different in order to be at peace? If we believe that we are finally going to have peace, when something or someone outside of us changes, serenity now is impossible. Only you can give you peace. Only you can allow what's already there to be. Turn within. God is there. 
so peace is there. The men were sitting in a boat when the storm came up. A storm like no other they'd ever experienced. And it seemed to come out of nowhere. The waves crashed the boat mercilessly, and all the men on board panicked. They were sure their lives were over. All but one. The one who rested calmly and peacefully in the bottom of the boat, he was actually sleeping, we are told. The men frantically woke him up. And so at peace was this man within himself that just speaking the words, peace be still, calmed the seas. He was able to command peace around him because he had peace where? Within him. That's serenity now. Most of us recognize this story found in the Gospel of Mark. We also recognize its meaning. We recognize the fear of the disciples because we've all experienced the storms of life, haven't we? The panic and fear we Feel when we are faced with that diagnosis, that painful, sudden loss, that troubled child, that overwhelming change. But we also recognize Jesus, whose way of handling the storms of life was not to run away from them or to deny them. The way he handled the crashing waves, the chaos, the noise, was to be at peace within himself. We recognize the Christ of Jesus, which is the Christ of us. That answer place within us that calms and comforts and guides and protects and assures and loves us. When my boys were little, I found myself comforting them, calming them the way my mom and grandma used to calm me. I'd rock them and say, shh, 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 they are there. Mommy loves you. Mommy's here. Shh, it's going to be okay. Remember those words? And they would almost always still, and most of the time they would fall asleep. And I would feel better. I would feel peaceful, like a prayer. I was reminded to be quiet, to listen. And I was reassured that I too was loved, and I too am never alone. My lesson today is as much about prayer as it is about peace. Because peace is prayer, and prayer is peace. I love the writings of James Dillett Freeman, known as the Poet Laureate of Unity. He wrote our beloved prayer for protection. And I had the honor of meeting him when I was 16 years old. I was at an international YOU, Youth of Unity Conference at Unity Village, and he was our keynote speaker. And at 16 years old, he had, and he had long white hair, I felt like I was meeting God. And he had a twinkle in his eye that I will always remember. Later in my talk, I'm going to share with you my most favorite prayer that he wrote. He would say it was a prayer that God gave him. Freeman wrote and spoke often about prayer. In one issue of Unity Magazine, he wrote these words. To pray is to feel your mind calming, your body relaxing, your spirit lightening, and your heart lifting. To pray is to put ourselves lovingly in the hands of the Father when we feel in the clutch of despair. To open our minds to the thought that even though we can't see the way, there is a power that knows where we are and knows where we're going. 
a higher wisdom than our own that knows what we need to experience in order to become what we're meant to be. And we need to trust this wisdom. Even when there's no sign of good, prayer is to affirm that the good is there. Prayer is valuable not because it alters the circumstances and conditions of your life, but because it alters you. A wisdom that knows what we need to experience to become what we're meant to be. I want to become all that I've meant to be. Don't you? I know you do, or you wouldn't be sitting here this morning. That's why, that's why you're here. So that means we must surrender to, trust in, accept with, love and thank that wisdom all darn day long, every day, as much as possible. We must build a relationship with God a real, meaningful, intimate relationship with the one who loves you more than you could possibly even imagine. We must take time to pray and meditate and just be with God. Give your attention to God. And whatever your prayer practice is now, add more time. This is the most important relationship in your life. And the only relationship that will bring you peace. The more you practice turning to God in your thoughts, the more you will feel and experience the presence of God in your daily life. You'll begin to find that you're not just thinking of God when you're praying. You're you're thinking of God when you're driving, and when you're eating, and when you're laughing, and when you lay your head on your pillow. And during the day, you'll find that you want to bless people who need blessing. And you you find that everything just looks like the flowers, more beautiful. And when a distressing moment comes, and they do, you will find yourself thinking of God first and not how upset you are or how wrong someone else has been. Now, there are times and situations when we momentarily forget that we are the peace of God, right? You know those moments. But the truth is, the truth is, they only have to last as long as you let them. They only have to last as long as you let them. This is when breath prayers are really helpful. For me, those are prayers that just take a breath to say, God is here. God is there first. All is well. Wherever I am, God is. God loves me. God is with me. Words that take you away from the fear, right to God. My peace is my responsibility. I read these words many years ago, and they have been invaluable in my life. I'd like to share them with you. Acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. When I am disturbed, it is because I find some person, place, or thing, some situation, some fact of my life unacceptable to me, And I can find no serenity until I accept that person, place, thing, or situation as being exactly the way it's supposed to be at this moment. Nothing, absolutely nothing happens in God's world by mistake. Until I accept life completely on life's terms, I cannot be happy. I need to concentrate, not so much, on what needs to be changed in the world as on what needs to be changed in me and in my attitudes. So what needs to be changed in you? How big or how small is God in you? How big or how small are the fears, the worries, and the doubts? 
Mark Nepo is one of my favorite authors, and in his book of Awakening, he tells this story. An aging Hindu master grew very tired of his apprentice complaining about everything. And so one morning, he sent him for some salt. When the apprentice returned, the master instructed the very unhappy young man to put a handful of salt in a glass of water and drink it. How does it taste? The master asked. Bitter. It tastes awful, answered the apprentice. The master laughed and then asked the young man to take the same handful of salt and go put it in the lake. The two walked in silence to the nearby lake, and once the apprentice swirled his handful of salt in the water, the old man said, Now drink from the lake. As the water dripped down the young man's chin, the master asked, How does it taste? It tastes fresh, remarked the apprentice. Do you taste the salt, asked the master. No, said the young man, I don't. At this, the master sat beside this serious young man who so reminded him of himself and took his hands, offering these words. The pain of life is pure salt, no more, no less. The amount of pain in life remains the same, but the amount of bitterness we taste depends on the container that we put the pain in. So when you are experiencing pain or worry or fear, the only thing you can do is to enlarge your sense of things. Stop being a glass. Become a lake. Moments spent with God, moments prayerfully feeling the loving presence of God within makes us a lake. Our container becomes so much more expansive and so much more able to stay centered and to calm the storms. The serenity prayer has helped bring comfort, hope, new life to literally millions of people. And although we think of it as the AA prayer or prayers, the prayer said in 12-step meetings, it was actually written by a Christian theologian and scholar named Reinhold Niebuhr in 1941 for a sermon he was giving. The prayer was inspired by his overwhelming grief and sadness over the war and his need to begin peace in his own heart. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Serenity comes first. We have to have the serenity, the peace within, the feeling of the presence and love of God first. God loves me. These words mean everything to me. Say those words right now. God loves me. God loves me. Remember, we need to have a close, meaningful relationship with God. This was the message of Jesus, that God was not in some far-off place. God is right here. I try to begin every day saying those words. God loves me. God loves me. God protects me. God guides me through every situation this day will hold. God will always be everything I need this day. That's serenity now. From that place of peace, we can then accept the things we can't change. And we have the courage to change the things that we can and that wisdom to know the difference. The things we can change are us, things in us. The things we cannot change that we must accept are the things in others. Living from this peace, living from this trust, living from this serenity, you bring a sense of calmness to everyone around you. More than that, your peace will flow to people you don't even know because those that you bless with your peace in front of you pass it on to others. Martha Smock, who wrote years and years for the Daily Word, wrote 
these words, and I feel like this is something I should try and we all should try. When families and friends get together, there can be a serene atmosphere, even if one person in the group knows the power of prayer. You can be that one. In any gathering, really, you can silently bless all who are present. You can know that God is in each person. You can be the center of peace. As you keep your attention on the good, on the good in every person. And you will find that as you bless the place where you are, as you bless the people that you're with, the atmosphere around you will be filled with your peace. Often people share that they feel so at peace in nature and with their pets. How many of you feel at peace in nature and with your pets? I love to be outside in the fresh air under the blue sky. How many of us are really awake to all the ways we are constantly reassured of God's love and protection? How many of us are aware when God is sending us messages? You were all given a feather today, right, when you came in? We got a feather. There's more out there if you didn't get one. So the Sunday school teacher in me just loves an object lesson. I can't help it. And I love an outer reminder of an inner gift. So I want to share with you one of my favorite stories from a, a book called Sacred Feathers, The Power of One Feather to Change Your Whole Life. I work in a busy office building surrounded by four lanes of traffic driving by in each direction. Across the boulevard lies a lake where I like to sit and read and meditate during my lunch hour. The lake is small but serene with tall pines and flowering bushes surrounding it. Despite all the noise and traffic, I soon tune it out. And I tune in to the beauty and the wildlife that comes there. There are numerous birds, mostly egrets, ducks, a few crazy blackbirds that dive into the water, and a few fish. One day as I was crossing the grass on the way to my spot by the lake, I stopped dead in my tracks. A few feet in front of me were nine white cattle egrets and one great blue heron. All stood motionless, facing the same direction, And I remembered seeing such a scene in a movie called The City of Angels. In this movie, the angels were in human form and each gathered every morning at sunrise at the beach to silently thank their creator for the day. They all silently faced the same direction. The scene had made such an impact on me because it felt so serene, so sacred. Now the egrets were standing at attention in the same way and it seemed to me in the in the same sense of serenity. And I was frozen. It was the most amazing sight I'd ever seen. And they stayed that way for several minutes until one by one, they went away. And I ate my lunch and I meditated as usual. The day was sunny. There was a magical atmosphere. When I got up to return to work, I took a few steps and heard the message. The gift is at your feet. There on the ground, were nine white feathers and one blue. I silently thanked the bird angels. Their message was clear. Often, as we all do, often I feel overwhelmed and out of balance, despite my attempts to let go and trust that all is well. I keep myself trapped by my own fears again and again. But angels always find a way of letting me know that I'm okay, that I am deeply loved and protected and guided. And I will always remember the silent serenity of the birds, my angels in disguise, and their incredible gift. So this is your reminder. Serenity is quiet. It's an open-mindedness to God and God alone. It's a place of stillness within. It's paying attention, whether in prayer or meditation or sitting in front of a beautiful group of birds. And a serene mind does not need to know how the answers will come. It just knows they will come. 
I mentioned my favorite prayer by James Sillett Friedman earlier today. I'd like to close with this powerfully comforting, peaceful message called, I am there. And I want to tell you that there's a copy of this prayer on the information table if you'd like to take it. So one little factoid I'd like to share with you as you go home tonight and it gets dark and you look up at the moon, there is a copy of this prayer on the moon. It was taken to the moon by astronaut James Irwin on the Apollo 15 moon mission because it was his mother's favorite prayer. James Dillett Friedman writes, I had gone to pray for Catherine in the silent unity prayer room in Kansas City. As I sat there in agony, unable to bring my mind into enough order to speak words of prayer, suddenly I heard one. I heard a voice. The voice was so real and so audible that I looked around to see who was there. The voice said, Do you need me? I am there. You cannot see me, yet I am the light that you see by. You cannot hear me, yet I speak through your voice. You cannot feel me, yet I am the power at work in your hands. I am at work, though you do not understand my works. I am not strange visions. I am not mysteries. And only in absolute stillness beyond self can you know me. And then but is a feeling and a faith. Yet I am there. Yet I hear. Yet I answer. When you need me, I am there. Even if you deny me, I'm there. Even when you feel most alone, I am there. Even in your fears, I am there. Even in your pain, I am there. I am there when you pray, and I am there when you do not pray. I am in you, and you are in me, and only in your mind can you feel separate from me. For only in your mind are the mists of yours and mine. Yet only with your mind can you know me and experience me. Empty your heart of empty fears. When you get yourself out of the way, I'm there. You can of yourself do nothing, but I can do all, and I am in all. Though you may not see the good, good is there. For I am there. I have to be, because I am. Only in me does the world have meaning, and only out of me does the world take form. Only because of me does the world go forward. I am the law on which the movement of the stars and the growth of living cells are founded. I am assurance. I am peace. I am oneness. I am the law that you can live by and the love that you can cling to. I am your assurance. I am your peace. I am one with you. Though you fail to find me, I do not fail you. Though your faith in me is unsure, my faith in you never wavers. Because I know you. Because I love you. Beloved, I am there. And that, my friends, is serenity now. God bless you.